So how do you begin on down the path towards collecting your OE score and making those improvements? Well, in talking with the folks at those organizations and others, plant managers and operators often explain that they get bogged down in the nitty gritty of running a plant, running from crisis to crisis. Why is this work order, uh, why is this work order late? Why is this machine down? How long will this inspection take, et cetera, et cetera. So I have kind of a, a cheeky metaphor here. This lovely mural of the late great Leonard Cohen can be found in his hometown of Montreal, Quebec. This particular view of this mural can be found a few blocks to the west of this particular building from an elevated vantage point on top of another building in Montreal. However, from street level, here is what you might see, All right? Same building, same mural, but now old Leonard, you can't really get a good look at him. You're not sure what's really happening on that side of the building. Similarly, in your plants, you might find it difficult to get the big picture when you are right in the mix of things, always watching for the squeaky wheel. Just as with this mural of old Leonard, you, may need, you might need to take a few steps back to see uh, the big picture. To start getting a sense of that bigger picture, a good place to start is by listing out the possible sources of inefficiency at your at, at all manufacturing plants and at your manufacturing plants. So one, uh, machine centers are frequently blocked by downstream problems or starved waiting for raw materials, right? Is your flow of, 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 of material down the line frequently stopped and started because equipment is going up or down? Are you having unexpected shutdowns for inspections or safety reasons? Are, are, are things occurring that require stoppages for inspection at times you don't expect. Are there injuries on your line, right? That's a, obviously a source of inefficiency as well as a safety risk. Um, are there frequent machine faults? Uh, potentially overcomplicated procedures can be a source of inefficiency. Can you twice bake a part instead of three times? Um, can you use a different painting process or what have you? Uh, can you simplify your procedures? Um, another possible source of inefficiency is whether material flow is intermittent or otherwise not ideal. Are you seeing big waves of parts and then they slow down? Do machines not work at continuous rates? Uh, if machines work at varied rates, are they limited by the efficiency of the slowest cell? It almost helps to think of your plant as a one lane road or a two lane road, and you're limited by that slowest car that's causing traffic to back up for miles. Uh, another possible metaphor here is a, a set of hikers, and they're all progressing together towards a destination. Such a group is often constrained by their slowest member, right? If you don't want to arrive without the guy in the back there, you have to walk at his pace. And that's, that's very similar to our, our production plants. Um, do you have too many rework cycles? Are you, are you having to rework and redo and redo parts before they can come out and be ready to go? That's obviously a source of inefficiency. Uh, is your rate of reject too high? Um, maybe a bigger picture. Are your goals unclear, right? Remember Arizona's goal was to keep their 23 ounce can at that 99% price point. That's a very clear goal, right? Uh, if you don't know what your goals are, are you'll never hit them, right? A, a, an unset goal is never achieved. So you have to set clear goals and production requirements. Are your operators perhaps undertrained when a crisis occurs or an equipment downtime event happens? Are they equipped to handle it? So these are possible sources of inefficiencies that we've seen in working with customers. Yours might be different. Make a list, uh, uh, list down what things slow your plant down. And that's a really, really good place to start. It will help you to give places to jump off and make improvements, and you should do that. However, one of the things that I've picked up is that it might help to look at your plant in terms of its constraints. Now, Eliyahu M. Goldratt wrote a really good book called The Goal, which is intended as a guidebook for improving the efficiency of any business, but is written in the form of a novel, oddly enough, about a plant manager who is attempting to improve 
uh, plant performance. Sounds similar to our situation or your situation. And the main point of that book is something called the theory of constraints. So what is a constraint and what is the theory of constraints? Well, Eliyahu says, uh, sorry for getting familiar with the first name there, uh, a constraint is anything that prevents the system from achieving its goal, right? Uh, in, in manufacturing, we might define a, const a constraint as anything that slows the rate at which an enterprise or a line or a plant or what have you produces saleable goods, right? What's slowing you down from making product you can sell? Some folks in, in plants call constraints bottlenecks, right? And you likely know what your bottlenecks are. The theory of constraints is focusing on improving the constraint, relieving the pressure at the bottleneck. Uh, that, that's the claim is that that's the best way to get your business to be more profitable. Uh, so imagine your bottleneck, you know, randomly is your palletizer. Can you augment your palletizer with another one in parallel? Can you run the palletizer operator crew in shifts, ensuring that the machine never stops running? Can you improve flow into or out of that palletizer such that it can always process its, its load more efficiency? The theory of constraints asks us to think this way about your plants. Every process has constraints. The, the, the goal and the theory of constraints claims that focusing improvement efforts on those constraints is the fastest and most efficient, uh, effective path to higher profitability. So how do we identify our constraints? How do we know what those constraints are? When folks reach out to us to explore implementing OEE, I make a point of asking what tools they're using to collect data to feed their current KPIs. Frequently, it's something on this list, manual data entry on paper or in spreadsheets or on chalkboards, right? They're writing things down, they're maintaining spreadsheets, they're you know, uh, passing things around. That's in fact the original MES, right? Multiple Excel spreadsheets. Uh, maybe they're winging it. They're using their gut to make choices. They're perhaps even they're making, you know, heaven forbid, self-interested decisions. They're they're marking a machine fall as a clean in place or something to that effect. You know, when when you have manual data entry and paper records and and the ability to kind of uh, you know do as you will, you you can really run into problems. The problems with these are numerous. They rely on human accuracy and honesty. They're often hard to keep up with. And there will always be discrepancies from reality with manually maintained data. So how do we get around these problems? Uh, to avoid the negative outcomes of manual maintenance of data, it's usually a good idea to automate as much of the collection of data as possible. That's not to say that if you are unable to automate data from one machine, you should abandon the effort and stop there. Most of the time, OE projects end up being a hybrid of automatic and manual data collection to some extent or another. In any case, the data points you need to power OE calculations and thereby identify constraints are largely as follows. Uh, machine count data, right? Uh, how, how much product is coming in or out of a particular machine? Where are rejects coming from, right? That's a key data point. How many pieces are you starting and, and, and finishing? Uh, equipment state data. Um, frequently on pieces of equipment, you have a PLC value that represents the, the equipment state or the, the, the downtime code. So one might be running, four might be e-stop, five might be a jam of some kind, right? Equipment state data. Uh, other contextual data, what material are producing? Are you producing? What work order are you producing against, right? And as, as And much of this data, we feel, can be collected automatically from your PLCs or your other industrial equipment. We think that using automation to collect this data and quickly calculate your OE is by far the best and most accurate way to calibrate and measure improvement efforts. Um, if you use automation as a tool to identify these constraints, you can have accurate recording of downtime to the second, right? You know when you're down, when you're back up, because your PLC tells you and tells you what time. Um, you can identify downtime causes automatically. You're not guessing, you're not writing them down based on what you're seeing. You're, the equipment tells you why it's down where possible. Um, 
you're empowered to make improvement decisions based on automatically recorded facts rather than judgment calls. You're minimizing the time that you're, that you're requiring your operators to spend managing paper, and you're maximizing their time running the equipment, man, ma, uh, maximizing efficiency that way. Um, you're frequently able to reduce the amount of rework because your operators are focused on what's happening in front of them. And finally, you're able to track production against scheduled targets in real time. How close are we on this work order? Well, we know because we know how many counts we produced and we know how many uh, parts are on this work order so we can see how, how close we are to completion. Now, um, obviously we believe that the best tool for automating this collection and the subsequent o OE calculation is Cephasoft's our own OE downtime module with incoming equipment data being provided by Inductive Automation's Ignition platform. If you'll indulge me, I'd love to take a moment and share a little bit about what our tool looks like. Now, I'm showing you here our newest improved components that are taking place in uh, the the new uh, the new ish that's been new since last year uh, a perspective visualization tool from inductive automation. Now perspective uh, lets you use the fully fledged automation tools you know in Ignition uh, right in a web browser or an iPad. And here we're using them in an MES context, right? So I'm, I'm able to quickly drag an array components on screen to empower my operator to see right from their iPad or from a web browser or from the new workstation thick clients, uh, how well their line is producing. What's my OEE? What are my top downtime reasons, right? Just from this dashboard that I was able to rapidly create an array on screen, I can see my in-feed count, I can see my outfeed count, rejects, what product code I'm producing. I can start and stop production runs. I can see downtime occurrences and I can override downtime reasons from one reason to another. I can even add notes and annotate why my equipment was down and, and uh, revert back to the original reason. I have lots of power to uh, 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 make real have real time understanding of why my equipment is down uh, uh, add context, override reasons, split reasons. These things can now all be done in a really nice visual way uh, uh, in these perspective enabled web or mobile uh, clients. Uh, here's my top downtime reasons, right? And here's my OE in feed, out feed, reject count. So the idea here is you're able to see all this stuff in real time right where you need it, not necessarily back in a terminal, back in the back office, but right on the plant floor or on an overhead display. So here it is running on an iPad, right? So I can hold this in my hand, uh, tap through my reasons, start and stop production runs. It's all available right where you need it. Also new for this year, we have uh, the ability to install the software directly onto edge devices like this Opto 22 Groove Epic uh, and have those OE calcs running real time right on the edge of network using Ignition's edge product. And here is a, a tool for producing an analysis data set, right? So here I've chosen from among our main many data points that the OE module provides, I've chosen my li line downtime reason and my line state duration. Uh, why am I why was I down and for how, how long was I down? I can filter down to a particular line or area or equipment, right? And then I can uh, group by my line downtime reason. And I can also order by my line state duration. And when I run this report, I'm empowered to see my real, my my OEE, sorry, my 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 top downtime reasons. And that report can be turned into a widget on our screen or put on a dashboard or what have you. So that's our OEE module, and that's how it looks these days. It runs right on your mobile devices, right on uh, a web browser or wherever you want it to run, right? And that's empowered by that ignition uh, perspective component.